Welcome to my channel. This is another edition of Daily News Clips. Before I start that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos and for subscribing. And thank you most of all for the comments. I really enjoy interacting in the comments. So thank you. <clears throat> I have a few items on the agenda today. Um, the first one is left-wing terrorists are burning Ca uh, Canadian churches to the ground. <laughs> As usual, I put all these links in the description for you. But uh, apparently uh, in Canada, they had schools for, in, uh, uh, for native children. And I, I don't know the whole history of it, but I think there was some some uh, there have been some negative stories about it and so some activists started claiming that there were mass graves of of native children beside these schools and a, and the schools were all religious apparently and so in reaction to that these leftists started burning down churches and there was an investigation that took place they did a bunch of digging up and they found no bodies at all but the burning hasn't stopped. So once again, we have leftists getting away with committing crimes and nothing is done about it. I feel sorry for you folks in Canada. I have another article about Canada that I'm going to get to in a minute. <clears throat> but the next thing I want to talk about is this article. Um... <clears throat> It's written by Don Serber, who is a has been a journalist for many, many years, I think almost 50 years probably. And I really like him because he has a very acerbic wit. But he wrote this article, Will They Get Away With It Again? And what it says is that uh, Trump shows signs of winning the election again, but not the presidency. And we all know the claims about the 2020 election being fixed. But uh, Serber has uncovered an article from uh, what is it? Uh, Molly Ball of Time Magazine that she wrote in 2020. And she actually told the truth about the election. This is what Molly Ball said. There was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Bush, uh, Bush, both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. The pact was formalized in a terse, little-noticed joint statement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and AFL-CIO published on Election Day. Both sides would come to see it as a sort of implicit bargain inspired by the summer's massive, sometimes destructive, racial justice protests in which the forces of labor came together with the forces of capital to keep the peace and oppose Trump's assault on democracy. And she goes on to write, their work, uh, boy, I'm having trouble reading this, their work touched every aspect of the election. They got states to change voting systems and laws and help secure hundreds of millions in public and private funding. They fended off voter suppression lawsuits, recruited armies of poll workers, and got millions of people to vote by mail for the first time. They successfully pressured social media companies to take a harder line against disinformation and use data-driven strategies to fight viral smears. 
they executed national public awareness campaigns that helped Americans understand how the vote count would unfold over days or weeks, preventing Trump's conspiracy theories and false stories of victory from getting more traction. <laughs> this was written by a leftist in 2020, right after the election, admitting that they tampered with the election. So, do with that what you will, but obviously I'll put the link in the description. Um, <clears throat> another one now, another article I wanted to bring to your attention is don't look now, but we are losing the war with the Houthis. And I just want to read you one small part of this. Uh, let's see. I got to make this small again so I can get up there. And here we go. Oh, now it's not going to load. Okay. Uh, down at the bottom of this article, I highlighted a section that I thought was interesting that you should know about. Right now, we aren't degrading any capabilities. We aren't on the path to victory. Last month, the Houthis sank a UK-owned Belize-flagged ship sailing through the, the Bob El Mondeb Strait and caused an 18-mile oil slick. The ship sank. The Houthis have hit four U.S.-flagged commercial ships since November. Last week, the Houthis hit a commercial vessel and killed at least three people. The crew abandoned ship. The bulk of commercial shipping has fled the Red Sea and is now sailing around Africa. <sighs> It's, you know, if, if we're going to, uh, if we're going to engage in warlike tactics without declaring war, which we do so often, the least we could do is use all the power that we have to put a stop to stuff. They're just dinking and dunking the Houthis and letting them continue to harass shipping and... <laughs> Basically, they've driven all the shipping out of the, the Suez Canal. They're having to go around the Horn of Africa now, which is a longer trip, costs more money. And, of course, that money goes into the, uh, that goes into the cost of the products that they're hauling. So, once again, America looks like a bunch of dummies. And the last item I have for you is Trudeau demands life in prison for speech crimes. It's actually true. I read the article and I did some research. The liberals in Canada are trying to pass a law that will allow them to put you in, tr in, in prison for life if you say the wrong thing on social media. No kidding. <laughs> and who gets to decide what the wrong thing is? The government. Talk about suppression of speech. And they're actually considering in this thing a passing a law that would uh, enforce a one-year sentence on you if they think you're going to post something. Craziness, I know. It's absolute craziness. But that is it. So again, I'll put all these links in the description. I now have three, one, two, three, free one-month subscriptions to public at Substack to give away. So again, if you want to get one of these subscriptions, all you need to do is send me an email. I have to have your email address to get you the subscription. Don't be afraid to send me an email. I'll, I'll give the first three people that email me a, a, a free subscription for a month to public Substack, and then you can decide on your own if you want to continue the subscription after you've gotten it for a month. Okay, so that's the news for the day, and I want you to know that I still continue every day to pray for you, to pray that you will have an abundant life, 
that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam-era vet, out.